All right, so in this video, we're gonna spend some more time working on our library example for this week's assignment. And what I'd like to do at this point is to get one additional set of sprites in here uh, to act as sort of hurdles or obstacles for the player as it's moving around the screen. So eventually, uh, if the little player, uh, giant orange brain, collides with one of the obstacle sprites, uh, I want something to happen. Probably the player will die or the game will restart, something like that. So um, let's go ahead and get some variables set up in our sketch here. And so I'm thinking of these obstacles sort of as rocks, so I'm calling them rock image and rock object and setting these up pretty much the same exact way uh, as I'm setting up the goal image. One difference is going to be eventually I'll have multiples of these rock sprites and so I'll probably create a group to add all of those to. But for now let's focus on just making a single instance and I've already gone ahead and uploaded a couple of new images. Uh, here you can see we got these two sort of like ice rock images. Uh, those are already in my sketch files. And while I'm at it here, uh, I'll add some comments to just give myself notes about what the different parts of the code are doing. This is a really good habit to get into. Often if you pause working on a project for a while and come back to it, it can be really helpful to pick back up where you left off. It's also a good way to just sort of organize your thoughts and organize your plans and your strategy for uh, writing a piece of code like this. And so for the most part this far, uh, I'm using that create sprite method to uh, save into my rock object variable, a new sprite object, and I'm setting it to spawn at a random point uh, somewhere in the middle-ish of the screen. Later on, I can tweak that, maybe uh, get that fine-tuned a little bit more in terms of where these obstacle objects are going to show up. And then let's go ahead and add our image there. So I can see I've at least got one uh, set up on screen. Um, I'm gonna pause with making additional obstacle sprites for now and work on getting some logic set up so that if the giant orange brain collides with my obstacle sprite, something happens. So to figure out how that's gonna work, uh, let's jump back to the reference and I'm gonna look in the sprite section. So I can see I have this uh, collide method. So this helps me check if a sprite is overlapping another sprite or a group of sprites. And I even get an example down here. Uh, so I can kind of crib this and apply it to my player sprite and my rock sprite. And basically uh, we call this method on a sprite object and we test if that sprite is overlapping with a different sprite. If it is, we'll trigger uh, a function. And so here the example is referencing this function called explosion, which is defined lower in the code. And that removes one of the sprites and we'll have to set up our own function, but it's kind of the basic outline of what we're going for here. So I can see here in the example, this explosion function is taking uh, as its parameters a sprite A and a sprite B. So I'm assuming that's referring to the two sprites that are colliding. Uh, probably sprite A is the one that we are calling the collide method on and sprite B is the one that we're testing for uh, in that collide method arguments. So I'm just gonna use the same exact format in my code And I'm pretty sure this remove method is correct. Let's go ahead and check that again in the reference. So 
We're still in the sprite section here. Remove, so it removes the sprite from the sketch. We won't be drawn or updated anymore. Now, of course, uh, we could add a lot more additional logic and a lot more code to handle uh, what would happen when the player collides with one of those obstacle objects. In this case, I think it's gonna be enough to just remove it from the screen. So let's make sure we are saving here. And I'll get my screencast up. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh. And let's see if we can get that giant orange brain over to our obstacle. <laughs> so um, it's one of the great things about you know this development process is as you test things, you'll start to uh, come across situations like this where um, I'm really noticing that I want to make some changes to uh, the way that I'm applying velocity to that giant orange brain. It's just moving so slowly, it's like painful to use. Hey, there we go. So my collision looks like it's working, that's great. Uh, so my next step is gonna be to get a group of uh, these obstacles set up in the middle of the screen. And the challenge will kind of be to navigate from the left side to the right side where we want to meet this goal object. I'll also need to set up a collision there uh, to create some sort of like a win condition or a little celebration uh, to happen when the player collides with the uh, flaming salamander. But, but we can see uh, this collide method makes it super easy to test when objects are touching one another. We didn't really have to add any additional code, we can just call up that method. So next I want to jump back to the reference page and figure out how I can set up uh, my code here to accommodate a group of those rock sprites. So I see I've got a group section here. I'm gonna spend some time reading through that and we'll see if we can figure this out. So from reading this, uh, it looks like what I can do is make an array of those rock objects, those rock sprites, and assign them to a group. It'll make it a little bit easier to refer to all of them uh, as sort of one thing. So let's go back up to my code, and I'm going to just change my initializations a little bit. And so both of these variables that are dealing with my rock sprite and the images that are, are assigned to it, I'll convert into arrays. So then in my preload, I'll give myself basically two different options of the image that I want to apply uh, to this group of sprites. So that'll just give me a little bit of variation. Um, so again, I have block of ice.png and then block of ice2.png. And here I'll just make myself a for loop with an iterator called i. Uh, and my exit condition will be based off of, I'll probably need to make another variable to set up how many rocks I'd like to appear in my scene here. So I'll say, run this loop until the iterator uh, hits whatever that rock count variable is, and bump it up by one every time the loop runs. Just get my indenting right. And here, I'm, I'm again switching from individual variables to array variables. So I'll give myself an index here that's specified by whatever that iterator variable is. And what I'd like to do, uh, again, I'd like to give myself some variation between those two different rock images. Uh, so I don't want to necessarily be adding rock image every single time. Um, I'm just gonna add a little conditional here uh, to help me switch back and forth between those two different images, more or less at random. So what this conditional is doing, uh, it is starting with a random number that's going to be between zero and up to, but not including one. So if that is less than 0.5, I'm going to take that object that we just created and add an image to it. And it's going to be the first element in that rock image array. Otherwise, we'll be adding the second element. So you can see here we get some variation between uh, the different elements.
Now, at this point, uh, I'd actually like to save this and test because I don't know whether I'll need to add that whole array of rock objects to a group. I might be able to just refresh this and see if it can actually function the way that I'm intending it to. Okay, so looks like I am getting some errors there. And I'm guessing it's going to come down to this line here. And what I'd like is if that player object collides with any of these uh, rock sprites uh, to trigger that die function. But I think the uh, P5 is getting confused because I'm referring to this, which is now an array, not just one sprite. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can put these additional obstacle sprites into a group and go that direction. So I've made an instance of my new group, and I just need to figure out what the method is to add uh, each of those new sprites that I'm making in my loop to that group. And looks like it's just that easy. So I'll call rockgroup.add and then add in the name of the sprite. So I've got that group set up, and my thinking here is I should be able to swap out that group name. My understanding from reading the documentation is that now if that player object collides with any of the members of the rock group, which are now all of these uh, blue ice sprites, then I should trigger that die function. So uh, let's get the screencast back up and see how this is behaving. Cool, I think that's working. 